Okay. Uh, Dan, it's all yours. I'm going to kill my camera so we don't soak up a bunch of bandwidth. Okay. So uh, thank you all for uh, joining us today. Uh, I'm going to give a half hour presentation, an overview of our Charm, Rotocraft, and eVTOL aircraft software. Uh, goal today is to answer the following questions. Who is Continuum Dynamics? What is our Charm software and who's using it? What's inside the software? What are the models? And what is it good at doing? And uh, how easy is it to, to learn? So let's go. So Continuum Dynamics is a small business. Uh, we've been working in the rotorcraft industry for uh, probably over 40 years now. So we have a lot of experience with vertical takeoff and lift aircraft. Uh, we focused a lot on aerodynamics, dynamics, performance, the, the uh, aerodynamic, uh, or what some people refer to as the aeromechanics design of aircraft, their performance, the loads, aerodynamic and structural loads, and aeroelastic effects, and uh, deformation of blades, and vibrations, and noise. Uh, that aspect, not the cockpit or uh, other details of building an aircraft. And we also uh, work in flight simulations, certainly including real-time piloted flight simulations. Our focus of the Charm software is to provide as much fidelity as we can in a, a tool that can get uh, fast turnaround times and daily design work. So it's a mid-fidelity tool. As you'll see, I'll talk a little bit about the models in it. It's not as high fidelity as CFD, but um, it can give you some pretty good results and fast. We've been working with NAS and the DOD on developing rotograph analysis tools and doing different projects and research for, for all through these last 40 years, as well as industry. And we've got about $60 million of R&D and projects uh, that has fed into developing the software and validating it. So we're not just a new company that's come around recently. Um, we, we have a very expert staff. My colleagues, Bob McKillop, teaches the dynamics course at the Penn State Short Course. Uh, my colleague Todd Quackenbush and I are, have been uh, involved in the Vertical Flight Society for many, many years uh, and have dozens and dozens of uh, published papers on our work. And we provide engineering services to both the government and industry, analyzing and designing uh, rotors and aircraft. As a matter of fact, we worked with cars and helicopters designing the rotors that are on the presidential helicopter today, among other uh, design projects we've worked on. Our collaborators, uh, again, we've worked with NASA uh, very, very closely over the last 40 years. Um, the Army and Navy, more recently with the Air Force and the Agility Prime program on eVTOL aircraft, as well as the FAA, and more recent work uh, primarily focused on reducing the noise of helicopters and exploring the modeling of eVTOL aircraft. We started out working primarily with Boeing, Bell, and Sikorsky, the major rotorcraft manufacturers in the U.S., but we've since then over the, this period of time, expanded working with smaller companies like Piasecki, Carson, Schiebel. Um, in the terms of universities, we collaborate often with Penn State and Georgia Tech on our research work and our development work. And more recently, we've been working with a lot of eVTOL companies, um, more than a dozen. We, we started with Uber Elevate. Uh, we worked closely with them until they were bought by Joby. Uh, but we continue to work with all their aircraft partners and many more people in the eVTOL business are uh, currently using CDI to help them design their aircraft and or using our software, our Charm software, to do aeromechanics and acoustics analysis. So what is the Charm software? Well, Charm is uh, typically in this business referred to as a comprehensive analysis code. You might be familiar with RCAS, the Army code, or CAMRAD2, uh, Wayne Johnson's code. These are other comprehensive analysis codes. And they're used to do air mechanical analysis of vertical lift aircraft. Um, Charm's focus, again, is on fast methods, do a high fidelity wake model. That was sort of our first uh, change, was to really focus on getting high fidelity into the wake model with a fast solution. So uh, if you look down in the bottom right corner here, this full span CVC wake. CVC is constant vorticity contour, so it's a free vortex wake. Uh, with curved vortex elements, and the CVC means that every single wake element has the same strength. So uh, that's the most efficient way you can do it, and using curved vortex elements also allows you to get higher efficiency than other wake models. Uh, what does that mean? Well, if every wake element has the same strength, uh, 
we can model the full weight coming from the full span of the blade, not just the tip vortex, and then it concentrates the vorticity where the vorticity is concentrated. Instead of, you know, releasing 20 or 30 particles from the full span, some of those are going to be zero strength particles, uh, particularly in board, and they carry the same CPU cost as ones outboard that have a lot of strength. So this model actually puts the vortex elements uh, where the vorticity is strongest. As you can see here, this is a full span wake model, but you can see that the vorticity is being released from the tip of the blade where it's the strongest. So every single wake element has the same strength and that maximizes the fidelity for the CPU. We also use hierarchical fast vortex methods. Uh, this is a mathematical construct that people came uh, uh, developed several years ago. Actually, it began with galaxy dynamics. It puts an octree grid around the full vortex field. It, it groups the uh, vortex elements into the different boxes of this octree grid, and then it does a, a multipole expansion and Taylor expansions to uh, maximize the, the uh, solution time. It, it, it reduces the solution from order n squared to order n log n, where n is the number of elements. If you have 10,000 elements, that's order 2,500 times faster. Now there's overhead related to building the octree box and setting up the hierarchical grid, but it, it still can give you 20 to 100 times speed. And the importance of this is that uh, unlike GPUs, this is all done on one processor. So when you're doing analysis and design, uh, with a GPU, you could, you could throw a thousand processors at it and get a lot of speed up on one calculation. But this gets you the same speed up on one processor. So if you have a Linux cluster of 100 processors, you can launch 100 jobs, do a sweep of 100 jobs, and each one is getting the same speed up that you might get with a GPU cluster. So it's really good for doing analysis and design fast if you have uh, a Linux cluster, which a lot of our customers use. We also have a source doublet panel model of the fuselage in here. So it's a fully coupled awake panel solution. Um, and we use a vortex lattice lifting surface model for the blades. So a lot of uh, comprehensive codes, uh, virtually, yeah, a lot of them use a lifting line model for the blades. We use a lifting surface, which gives you uh, a cord wise distribution. So when you go to eVTOL aircraft, instead of these helicopter main orders that are high aspect ratio, Having a vortex lattice method to get 3D effects and a cord-wise distribution is, is good. You have these lower aspect ratio prop blades. You have wings and tail surfaces that are lower aspect ratio, and you can get the, a model of the full cord-wise distribution. Um, you can even, if you want to take a little bit of a CPU, it actually deflect the flaps of the control surfaces physically and see what's happening when the prop watch goes over the, the wings. So the vortex lattice method gives you some higher fidelity uh, above lifting line models, particularly for eVTOL aircraft. And the whole thing is a coupled solution, again, using these vortex lattice methods. However, it is an inviscid solution. And there's a lot of viscous effects, particularly in modeling the airfoils, the viscous drag on these wings. And, uh, and so that has to be modeled empirically. And there are a lot of empirical models that are in these comprehensive codes that are the, the result of years and years of uh, uh, development to, to match real real life test cases. So. Uh, a lot of models that you'll see that are coming out these days don't have the same kind of pedigree in terms of, of developing these internal models that Boeing, Bell, Sikorsky, and the rest have, for the last 40 years have required to do real real work. So um, next, how do you use Charm software? Uh, how easy is it to use? Well, Brandon's going to give a talk after ours of, of, of they developed this open VSP to Charm interface. Uh, we also, working with NASA, have developed an open VSP uh, and, and dark to Charm interface where you can build your vehicle in OpenVSP, or if you have an NDARC build, and automatically generate Charm input files. And the next session, Brandon's gonna show you how not only can you generate Charm input files, but within OpenVSP, you can launch uh, sweeps of files and then post-process the files. You should also Google NASA RVLT workshop, because we're working closely with NASA. We've built all of their RVLT, that's revolutionary vertical lift technology, all their aircraft, we have example, lift plus cruise, uh, quadcopters with collective control or RPM control, tilt wings, tilt rotors, conventional helicopters. We've built all of their aircraft in OpenBSP. And uh, at this workshop, I'm gonna Google it right here and then slide this over so you can see it. Um, August 22nd through 26th, if you're a US citizen, I'm gonna go through how Charm is in the uh, work, the, the uh, software tool chain. You, you size an aircraft with an NDARC, you do the aeromechanics analysis with camera tour charm, you feedback that information with NDARC, 
and eventually you come through to an Aeron or ANOP2 acoustics prediction tool. So we're being used by NASA. We're in their tool chain. And, and this workshop, which you can sign up for for free if you're a U.S. citizen, will go through how you can use the NASA tools, which you can get online from their software catalog uh, and run Charm within their, their, their catalog. So uh, here are the Charm models of these aircraft. Once you've built an open VSP, you analyze it with Charm. You can use the traditional methods that we apply, or you can do the methods within open VSP that Brandon's going to be describing. You do a full analysis of the aeromechanics, the loads. You can do a full aircraft trim. There's a finite element model in Charm, so you can look at the blade loads and the structural loads. All the things that rotorcraft manufacturers have needed for years and years to, to do a full design of the aircraft. And then Charm automatically runs PSU WAP WAP afterwards, or you can automatically generate ANOP2 files, which is what we do with the NASA tool chain, and do a full acoustics analysis. Then you analyze your vehicle with ANOP2 and PSU WAP WAP. Uh, you can also just run the FAA noise certification procedures right out of these codes and, and see how well you're stacking up if you were going to certify your aircraft for the FAA. I want to emphasize that we've, we've done this approach of we focus on the aeromechanics and we let uh, NASA focus on and OpenBSP focus on the, you know, building your aircraft and DARC on focusing on sizing your aircraft and NASA and Penn State on these acoustics analyses. So as they develop, as NASA continues to pour in money developing ANOP2 and making it better and better, particularly now in EV tall aircraft noise and all these different noise sources, broadband noise, electric motor noise, all that comes with us. We don't have to develop it again at CDI and repeat what they've done. We don't have to develop it again at PSU. Uh, Penn State continues to develop PSU WAP WAP. The links are in there to run with ANOP2 and PSU WAP WAP. So as they continue to develop their codes, which they're using, and these are the codes that the government's going to use to evaluate aircraft and that the FAA is going to use. Uh, all those links exist, and we just we just gain by leveraging what they're doing. And the other thing I want to mention is that for EV tall aircraft, it's important to have a flight simulation as well as a, an analysis tool, standalone analysis, when you're doing your preliminary design. These are you know very complicated aircraft to control. They're over controlled, lots of options, lots of issues. Uh, my time's going to run out, I see, but, um, you know, it's important uh, for people designing EV tail aircraft in particular to, to recognize that one engine out in transition is going to be a big player in determining the sizing of your aircraft. You can't just focus on cruise and hover. Uh, in terms of safety, are you going to be able to control your aircraft when you lose any motor on that aircraft? And uh, the best way to, to figure that out is to have a flight simulation where you actually or designing a controller and then seeing whether you can control the aircraft. So we work with Penn State right now. They've developed a DEP sim, a distributed electric propulsion flight simulation, which is coupled to Charm and PSU WAP WAP. And uh, that's available to people if they're interested in having a full flight simulation capability to, to also model uh, all these aspects of the EV tail aircraft going right through to the noise. So what is Charm software good at modeling? Uh, again, it's fundamentally inviscid, but we've got extensive validation over 30 years of how to, to add in the viscous effects, particularly the airfoils on the blade, the stalling characteristics, uh, fuselage modeling. So these are the things that's good at modeling performance, aerodynamic loading, structural loading, blade dynamics, motion and deformation, noise, the weight flow field, interactional aerodynamics, which are even more crucial for uh, EV tall aircraft than conventional helicopters. We can do multiple rotors with time-bearing RPM, which is critical for EV tail aircraft, and ducted rotors using the panel method. I'm going to quickly go through some correlations to emphasize what it can do and what it can do well. So the most important thing that manufacturers are interested in, or one of the most important things, is the hover performance. And you're looking at something when you're in hover performance called figure of merit. That's how close you are to the ideal performance, with one being the ideal performance. And uh, one point in figure of merit is just uh, one one-hundredth of these. So like, if you can get one point, if you can get from 0.7 to 0.71, that's a big deal in terms of how much you can lift. Um, these are not easy correlations to match. Uh, you have to be able to match the, the stall characteristics because you get up to high CT, uh, 3D effects. Um, and we've you know, got this full range of correlations that, that I run every time I upgrade Charm to make sure we can still do conventional helicopters, model helicopters, Blackhawks, a standard utility helicopter. XV-15 and V-22 are two tilt rotors, which are highly twisted blades, and this is the presidential uh, helicopter blade. So 
Uh, hover performance is something that Charm can do quite well, and it's not an easy thing to do. Also, you need to know the spanwise loading. So this is basically as you go along the blade from the root to the tip, what is the thrust along the blade for different thrust levels. Uh, Charm can do this. That's important so that you can analyze the wake properly. If you don't know the spanwise loading, you're not going to get the wake solution properly. And also, you're not going to get the structural loads on your blade. So this is hover. Uh, some more plots showing in forward flight. Um, edgewise flight performance, power versus thrust. Uh, edgewise flight, uh, in some cases, is it's easier to do power versus thrust than hover because the wake is now moving downstream. But one thing for um, eVTOL particularly is that you, you have a lift plus cruise, you're going to be stopping the rotor. And that can get you to very high advance ratio. In fact, if you stop the rotor, you're going all the way up to an infinite advance ratio in typical helicopters, only go up to about 0.3. So advance ratio is speed divided by tip speed of the rotating blades. And we've done some work with Charm making sure that we can, this is uh, advanced ratio of 0 0.3, 0 0.46, 0 0.5, 0 0.51, 0 0.62. So even going up into high advanced ratios, uh, you can use the charm analysis to get your performance. Uh, and these are tram tilt rotor test data. This is the power versus shaft angle at different thrust angles, and this is the propulsive force. I'm putting this, this up here because these are high, highly twisted prop rotor blades in edgewise flight. Um, the same model and charm can predict these. You don't have to do any tuning adjustments to do a higher twist blade. Uh, axial flight, here's cruise for a JVX. Axial flight is actually easier to do. This is the power versus thrust. But you also might be interested in some of these advanced turboprop blades, which are much a lower aspect ratio. As I said, we have a vortex lattice method, so you can do the power versus thrust for more uh, turboprop blades that look like this. And also, uh, because we have the panel method, you can do uh, ducted prop performance. Ducted prop performance really only works for axial flight uh, and hover. Once you get into edgewise flight and you have a uh, full separation from the body, you'd have to use other analyses that we actually have at, CFD, at CDI. Um, and these are CFD analyses to do the, the uh, edgewise prop performance. As I said, Charm has a finite element analysis. So if you put in the cross sectional properties of your blades, you can calculate the, the frequencies, their shapes, uh, and their, uh, and their uh, natural frequencies. Uh, so you can calculate blade flapping. This is lateral and longitudinal flapping. And more importantly, you can calculate the blade loads. This is an H34 main rotor loads. Um, so this is as a function of azimuth that you rotate the blade. That's the x-axis and the y-axis. Here is the normal force, the pitching moment, and the flap bending moment, cord bending moment, and torsion moment. These are all at one radial location, which is an important radial location. You, you can do it at all radial locations, but you want to know these normal force and pitching moment you know, near the tip of the blade. Uh, and you want to know the flat bending moment uh, near the center of the blade and the cord bending and torsion moment. You can see the charm does a good job of this. Um, it's hard to get the cord bending moment accurately, but also it doesn't matter as much as the flat bending and the torsion moment. Uh, this is at low speed, edgewise flight. and this is at high speed for the H34. So you can calculate, this is saying you can calculate the aerodynamic loads and you can calculate the structural loads so you can figure out the, the loads on your blade. One thing a lot of easily tall people are underestimating is how much they're gonna have to fly in edgewise flight and what the loads are gonna be when they go to these rigid props. So helicopter people for a long time discovered that this hinged rotor is an unbelievably good thing for offloading uh, in edgewise flight. Uh, with these props, yep, they're they're much shorter, sturdier. They don't have to fly in edgewise flight as much, but but um, you know when you try to transition, you are going to be in edgewise flight for quite a while. You're going to have a rigid prop, and you're going to want to have a tool that can tell you what the loading is to make sure that you can do it. Wake flow fields. Uh, this is uh, you know the wake flow field between behind a single isolated rotor. Uh, that was a span, that was a, sort of in the horizontal plane, and this is in the vertical plane. Uh, here's an example of a tilt rotor test case where they put a tilt rotor in the wind tunnel, and they wanted to see if they could predict the, uh, they measured the velocity field back at the empennage. So uh, these are correlations, um, the blue dots are the test data, and then these are different charm settings trying to show that we can match what the flow field looks like at different vertical heights at the horizontal tail. And then uh, the panel method allows you to calculate the loads on the fuselage. So the black dots are test data along this fuselage for the 
The pressure coefficient in the blue is the charm predictions. You can get the mean pressure at a particular uh, location. Uh, no, this is a, the, mean lo the mean pressure along the whole fuselage along the side. So this is the mean pressure along the whole fuselage. And this is the uh, pressure at a particular location showing the, the uh, end rev number of blade passages. And this is, this is a characteristic shape if you're underneath the blades. And this is a characteristic shape if you're getting the weight interaction. So we can calculate these, these pressure fluctuations, which I'll show later, very good for, for calculating the noise on the fuselage. We also work with NASA um, validating the CHARM PSU WAP WAP code for predicting the noise from the standard helicopters. They flew uh, these six different helicopters, uh, measured the test data on the ground, the acoustic data, the, the top plots here are the sound exposure level, level measured as you flew over the ground for each of these aircraft. And the bottom is the KiloSim CHARM uh, PSU WAP WAP predictions, which uh, we've shown are quite good. Uh, maybe a little off in this case because we didn't model the Fenestron of the EC-130. So uh, just to emphasize for eVTOL aircraft, what's the modeling challenges that are different from rotorcraft? Well, remember you now have propulsor airframe interactions because you have uh, all these props in front of a wing. You also can gain some uh, uh, lift from the tip propulsors. And uh, so you have to be able to model that aerodynamic effect those aerodynamic effects accurately to see what, what gains you're getting, what lift augmentation gains you're getting from the uh, PAI in your configuration. It's a compound aircraft, so it has a complex mixture, mix, mix of rotors, props, wings, tails, complex aerodynamic interactions. Uh, we've been working with the Navy for, for 30 years now on new interactions that come up every, every year with the V-22 that have to be studied, things that are unexpected. It gives you multiple control options, which, as I said before, that means you really want to have a flight simulation in your analysis so you can see how you can fly the aircraft. The configuration has a fundamental change from hover to, to, to cruise. So standard helicopters fly in the same configuration. Now you have a tilt wing. You might have stopped rotors or tilting rotors. You have slowed stopped rotors. Again, an important thing for having a flight simulation because you're changing the whole configuration as you go from hover to cruise. Redundancy, can you meet the engine out control re requirements? Gust rejection, you don't have hinges, so can you reject gusts? What's the ride quality like? Noise is different. You've lowered the tip speed, so the conventional thickness and loading noise is lower, but now you have new broadband sources. Anyone who's heard drones flying knows it can be quite annoying. So these are some of the challenges. I had to go quick because I'm running out of time, but there are challenges that, that uh, actually the, the, the charm software is ideally suited for addressing, and we've been working with NASA over the last several years trying to upgrade CHARM and lots of, lots of projects to do these types of things. Here's, here's a correlation for this uh, two props in front of a wing showing the top is, is showing the, uh, the um, uh, lift of the prop wing configuration. Basically just focus on the black, which is the test data, and the green, which is the CHARM prediction, and the bottom is the X-Force. And this is an angle attack of 40 degrees, 60 degrees, and 80 degrees. So this is an important configuration to show that if you have this props in front of wings configuration on your eVTOL aircraft, that Trump's going to be able to, to calculate the, the uh, uh, aeromechanics. And then quickly, here's a, uh, an example of um, uh, noise, uh, rotor airframe interaction noise, another eVTOL type configuration. So they tested at NASA a prop above a rod and a cone. And they wanted to see what, what happens to the noise when you put a rod or a cone. This represents the strut that's supporting a quadcopter rotor uh, next to a rotor. And uh, they did these tests. And if you look at this, this is the measurement. This is moving the rod further and further away. But the black is isolated rotor. And the red and the blue is when you have the rod and cone. And you can see this is the blade passage frequency. And suddenly there are these high harmonic peaks at two, three, four, five, low harmonics of the blade passage frequency. The isolated rotor is down here, actually. There's nothing. So this is a big noise source. I can play it briefly here. That's rod when it's close, rod when it's away. And you know, you'll know, you look at this later when you play back the video, but Charm uh, uh, with, the, with the panel method does a really good job of capturing this. Um, here's a comparison with CFD. And you can see for the cone, uh, test data is black. Charm is blue and red is CFD. This is the acoustic pressure time history, and, and Charm is actually even closer than the CFD for the cone, a little bit further away for the, for the um, rod, but 
but matching these peaks very accurately. So you can you can see how close you put your struts to your, your rotors in a quadcopter and what's the noise hit with this with with the tool. So this is my final slide. Um, just want to uh, talk quickly about ongoing research. Again, we, we're working with with NASA, the FAA, the Agility Prime Program, further enhancing charm. We're looking at uh, noise prediction for EV tall aircraft. All this is focused on EV tall now. Uh, ride quality and safety assessment for EV tall aircraft. Next generation design tools, which are, are even a higher fidelity model. Certification, how are we going to do it? We're working with the FAA on how, how to certify the aircraft. And finally, this is uh, another exciting project. We're trying to get to the point where we can have interactional aerodynamics in our flight simulations for EV tall aircraft. We're already doing this for conventional helicopters, but if we can have interactional aerodynamics in real time in an EV tall aircraft flight simulation, that would be awesome because that's a key issue for their safety of, of these aircraft. So thank you. Um, uh, once again, you might consider uh, going to that NASA workshop, August 22nd to 26th. And if you want to get any more information, my email address is dan at continuum-dynamics.com.